Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is Every Cancelled Predator Movie. The first Predator film was neither Arnold Schwarzenegger nor John McTiernan's best artistic work, but it built so much tension or a sense of dread that it was never bettered in any Predator film. Success because it seemed as if the lead characters had testosterone flowing in their veins instead of blood. The critics loved it. The audience loved it. Everybody loved Predator. However, then came along Predator 2. Although an artistically brilliant film, it lacked many of the key themes that made the original a hit in the first place, and naturally, it didn't do well commercially. So, the executives became wary about the future Predator projects. A few years later, we got the two Alien vs. Predator films, and even these failed to revive the Predator franchise to the level that 20th Century Fox had expected. Naturally, the executives became further weary about their next move. With the 2010 film Predators, they probably breathed a sigh of relief, but that didn't last long because of Shane Black's The Predator. So you see, the more failure a franchise sees, the more concerned and apprehensive the executives become about funding a project or greenlighting it. But that doesn't mean that artistic people like writers and directors stop thinking about the franchise or the characters. Naturally, many writers actually wrote a lot of scripts for various Predator films and sequels. Some of them showed a lot of potential, but got axed anyway. So, in this video, we'll explore seven Predator movies that got cancelled at one stage or another. Let's begin, shall we? But before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Number 1. Predators 2 after the first two Predator films, fans didn't get what they really deserved and had to settle for two poorly executed Alien vs. Predator films in the 2000s. Then in 2010, the film Predators went into a new direction, and for a moment, it felt like the franchise was about to revive itself from the shallows. But then, The Predator happened in 2018, and well, we all know how that turned out. However, screenwriter Alex Litvak revealed in 2020 what Predators 2 could have been if it had been made. So, in Predators 2, Royce and Isabel were the last ones left on the Game Preserve planet, and the three Super Predators were dead. However, the Super Predators in the movie belonged to a larger clan, and the rest of that clan kept dropping more people. The film would have opened with someone being dropped onto the planet, and a Predator arriving to kill this particular person. However, Royce and Isabel slay the Predator before he can do anything, and they welcome the person by saying, Welcome to the Resistance. This way, Royce and Isabel Isabel had created for themselves a tribe of sorts by saving and bringing in more people into the fold. Despite the fact that the Predators were hunting them incessantly, Royce and Isabel strike back with an equal and opposite force. This strong resistance and success has made them the primary and most wanted target of the Super Predators because they want the DNA of Royce and Isabel so that they can upgrade themselves further. Royce and Isabel convert this very threat into an opportunity to get back to Earth. Now, how do they do that? Well, the only way that they can escape the Game Preserve planet is by taking over one of the Predator ships. So, they allow themselves to get captured by the Predators, and from there, they're taken to the ship, so that their DNA can be extracted and further experiments could be performed. Now, this was to be a huge ship, and the rest of the film would have felt like Predator meets Die Hard. We all love how Bruce Willis's John McClane fought Alan Rickman's enigmatic and epic Hans Gruber and his henchmen in the 40-story tall building. Predators 2 would have ended with the humans getting back to Earth, but there's a catch. They were about some 300 years late, and Colonial Marines would have discovered them. This was essentially a nice touch because this way, the film would have tied itself in to the Alien universe. We think it was a great script, but the film never made its way to the silver screen. Predators was a fairly decent film, and instead of going for a direct sequel, Fox gave us more of a reboot or a standalone film, and this turned out to be a problem for the franchise. I mean, we had Predator, then Predator 2, many years later there was Predators, and then The Predator. There's hardly a thought being put to any continuity. Well, now that Disney has taken over Fox, we can only hope that they have a better vision of the franchise, and can be sensible about it.
Number 2, a Predator film set in the 18th century. At the end of Predator 2, Harrigan successfully kills the city hunter Predator, and others of his clan appear to take their fallen warrior. In that scene, the elder Predator gives Harrigan an old flintlock with the engraving Raphael Aldolini, 1715. When the elder Predator offers Harrigan the pistol, he says, take it. Take it. It was a sign of respect to the winner. Harrigan proved his mettle against the sturdy alien and became a man deserving the Yaoji respect and honor. Apart from this symbolism, this scene also led to the scope of a prequel set in the early 18th century, but the poor box office performance of Predator 2 ensured that this proposed prequel never happened. However, that didn't stop Dark Horse Comics from picking up the film scene and writing a story behind it. The comic is set in 1718 and close to the Bermuda Triangle. A pirate named Raphael Adelini was the captain of his ship, but Raphael was a unique pirate. Yes, he did plunder what he wanted, and when the other ships saw his sails, they still shivered in fear and dread. But Raphael lived by the code of never attacking and looting anything from the church. One day, his crew found out that a ship was carrying huge amounts of gold, but the wealth belonged to the church, and they knew that Adelini would never go ahead with the loot. Naturally, the crew had to make a choice, and they made it. Adelini was confronted and cornered, but the brave and honorable pirate wasn't one to give up so easily. He was prepared to kill his own crew for his code, or die trying. One that now this entire incident was being watched over by a predator. When the battle began, the predator appeared and sided with Adelini. Together, they fought valiantly and defeated all the rogue pirates. The Predator helped Adelini because he saw the human as a worthy and honorable opponent and wanted to hunt him, but that wouldn't have come to place if the pirates had killed him first. After everyone was defeated, Adelini and the Predator got into battle stance and were about to fight, but an injured pirate shot Adelini at the back. In his dying moment, Adelini gave the Predator his flintlock and said, take it. The Predator then gave Adelini one of his weapons and repeated the words. The Predator was none other than the one that Danny Glover's character met at the end of the film, Predator 2. Number 3. The Hunt – Alien vs. Predator the film Aliens vs. Predator dealt with a team of humans on Earth being entangled in a battle between two vicious species, hell-bent on killing each other. But way before the film was released, there was a comic titled Alien vs. Predator that Dark Horse Comics had published back in 1990. The story of the comic and the film are way different from one another. However, screenwriter Peter Briggs had written a script for a cancelled AVP film that closely followed the comic's story. Peter Briggs' script followed a group of predators who would seed planets with xenomorph eggs so that facehuggers could impregnate the planet's indigenous life forms, and the resultant xenomorphs would be used as prey for the unblooded Yaujas, carry out their blooding ritual or coming of age ceremony. For this purpose, they had with them a captured xenomorph xenomorph queen that would lay eggs for the seeding, but before dropping the eggs, they would ensure that all royal eggs that would lead to the birthing of other queens were to be eliminated. But to make things more challenging and exciting, the predator leader, named Broken Tusk, interrupted this process and dropped a royal ovomorph on the planet of Ryushi, which was a lush green planet with tropical weather. The planet housed a communications outpost, and a small colony of humans took care of its operations. Thanks to the predators, Ryushi was infested with xenomorphs that had been birthed from the indigenous life forms of Ryushi. Predators arrived on the planet. They first killed a few humans, and then went ahead to find the xenomorphs. But Broken Tusk's sense of adventure had proved too much for him, and he lost all his brethren until he was the only one remaining alive. He would then go on to join hands with a human named Hiroku Noguchi to find Ryushi Queen, kill her, and destroy her hive. Noguchi fought brilliantly against the Xenomorphs and earned the respect of Broken Tusk. In the climactic battle, Broken Tusk got mortally wounded by Xenomorphs, and Noguchi took his weapons to fight the acid-spitting aliens all by herself. 
By now, the Colonial Marines had been dispatched to rescue the humans, along with any xenomorph specimen. However, before they could come, Noguchi saw that a predator's dropship appeared to pick up the body of their fallen warrior, Broken Tusk. Since they had been witnessing the unfolding events, they got impressed by Noguchi's valor and offered her a place in their ranks as a predator. Noguchi had tasted the life of adventure and the thrill of hunting, so she accepted their offer. When Briggs presented his script to 20th Century Fox, he was simply looking for a job and didn't know that they would actually give heed to his script. But coincidentally, Fox executives had recently discussed merging the Alien and Predator universes. But when Briggs' script came in, it turned out to be quite efficient and well-written, so Fox asked him to rewrite the script. Although the script never lived to see the light of day and eventually got axed, fans of the franchise have often said that Briggs' script had way more metal than Paul W.S. Anderson's 2004 film. Number 4. AVP 3 Liam O'Donnell had written a sequel to the 2007 film Alien vs. Predator Requiem, but since it was in the preliminary stage, the script was simply titled AVP 3. The script was based on a slightly futuristic Earth that was about to face an apocalypse due to non dugisous use of resources and resultant global warming. Exaggerated levels of global warming had led to a steep rise in water levels, so much so that many island nations had sunk and large continents like Asia and the Americas had shrunk in size. Many had lost their lives, and their remaining population was surviving in pieces of land with enormous population densities. In these conditions, finding new land had become indispensable, and the world governments merged together to form a united world federation under the guidance of the Wayland yutani Corporation. This being said, World Federation had found Yauja weaponry in Africa and was using it to find new planets and colonize them. However, due to Wayland yutanis control and near autocracy, revolution revolutionaries and rebels had come up, most of whom went to what was left of Africa, which was the only continent out of Wayland's control. The climactic battle would have taken place in Africa between the freed xenomorph queen, a Yauja, and a human. The script looked promising with a lot of angles involved, including politics, rebellions, etc. It also had a lot of scope for decent visual effects and high-octane battle sequences. But the poor critical and commercial reception that Alien vs. Predator Requiem received became the primary cause for the abandonment of this project. From what we know, the executives wanted the film to be set in space because Requiem mentioned the homeworld of the Algas. Number 5. Robert Rodriguez Predator Sequel Robert Rodriguez was the first person who was asked to write the script of Predators. Although the script was axed in the developmental stage, a lot of elements from the film were included in the 2010 film Predators that Michael Finch and Alex Litvak wrote. The most fascinating aspect of the script was that it brought back the character of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Dutch from the original Predator film. The story begins with a group of soldiers armed with Predator costumes and weaponry attacking a ship that was sailing across an unknown ocean. The soldiers kill the ship's crew and capture one man alive, who is revealed to be an older Dutch. Later, Dutch is produced in a trial where he is convicted of various crimes, including murder and smuggling weapons. He is then sentenced to prison on a planet called Arcus 6. Jack Carver and his men are assigned with the task of taking Dutch to the said prison. But when they reach Arcus 6, they discover that the landing pad has been destroyed and deserted. After landing, they decide to walk to the prison, but on their way, they find a crucified predator, which attacks a man who gets too close. Dutch uses the commotion as a window of opportunity to escape into the jungle. When the soldiers pursue him, they get ambushed by other predators, who killed a few soldiers, but captured most of them alive. These men are then taken to a campsite near a large arena and are put in cages, along with other several voracious and deadly alien creatures. The soldiers soon realize that they would be made to fight each other, or the alien creatures in an arena like gladiators. 
One of the soldiers named Hardwick manages to escape her cage and runs into the jungles, but a large black predator follows her. However, Dutch saves her from the predator by jumping into a pool of mud to escape the predator's heat vision. Furthermore, it is revealed that the military has been trading humans for predator weaponry for quite some time now. To make things worse, the soldiers find out that the predators have been experimenting with humans and aliens to create deadly slave beasts. In the end, Dutch and Hardwick free many alien creatures who wreak havoc on the facility. They use this chaos to free the captive soldiers and flee. Dutch then frees the crucified predator in the hopes that they would ally with him against their common enemy. But the predators had been following the humans, and they all get either captured or killed. Dutch was about to meet his death as well, but the crucified predator appeared in a stolen predator spaceship and saved him from death. While Dutch is on his way home, he theorizes that a full-scale predator invasion on Earth isn't very far. As you may notice, the script bears a close resemblance with the film. For instance, the black predator is in line with the berserker. The alien creatures and the river ghost from the film also seem similar. And then there's of course the crucified predator. But the most striking similarity is the central theme of humans being captured and taken to a whole different planet as prey. In fact, the 2010 film was supposed to feature Arnold in a cameo, but since he was not available at the time of filming, his part was edited out. Number 6. Vincenzo Natali's Predators it is a known fact that many writers and directors were attached to the Predator or Alien franchise at some point or another. The only issue was that most of these projects never saw the light of day. One such director was Vincenzo Natale, the director of films like Splice, Cypher, Cube, and many more. He revealed in a 2015 tweet that he had pitched the idea for a Predators film to Fox back in 2010, but there was no established script as such. It was simply an idea that humans would fight Predators on their own planet, Yauja Prime. However, he did give a string of visually rich drawings and a spiky and sleek looking Predator, a beautiful jungle that was to act as a war zone as well as more details. Although this project never went very far ahead, Natalie's take on a Predator film would have been an interesting film to behold. Number 7. Predator 3 just like the previous entry, there was another short-lived Predator project that died in the infant stages of development. Fox had always maintained the opinion that there could be no Predator film that didn't star Arnold in it. Obviously, they had taken their lesson after the failure of Predator 2 that starred Danny Glover. So, the co-writer of Predators, Alex Litvak, addressed this issue and he pitched a story to Fox sometime in 2010 that kept Arnold in the center stage. The story was to follow a Predator ship crash landing on Earth and the government approaching Dutch to lead a mission to investigate the matter. Dutch would have been portrayed as an older man who was living a peaceful and secluded life. After reaching the Predator ship, the team of men would have been attacked by the hunters, whose only target was Dutch, the man who had killed the jungle hunter. And from there, it would have followed a similar plot to the original film, but this time from a more modern visual angle and against several Predators instead of just one. However, the script never made any success, and it's possible that Arnold had lost all interest in resuming his role of Dutch. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For marvelous videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.